This is the Night Force Action Report from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, November 12th, 2013. Come at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Join this evening. Only one other man in the force, and that would be Aaron McNeil. Duo Force. Hey, Justin. <laughs> Are you up for the task at hand? I'm always up for forcing and nighttime. Let's just force all of it. It doesn't matter. Um, but before we get to video game stuff, what other stuff have you been doing? Stuff is what I've been doing. <laughs> so it's been a while, and I've been meaning to talk to someone about this, but I went and saw. Yeah, be here for this. I went and saw Gravity mm-hmm. like weeks ago, and that's like the last movie I've seen. I guess until the new Hunger Games comes out, I have to see that one. But oh, yeah. Gravity is a pretty damn good movie. I've heard like about... people won't stop buzzing about it. It's I don't know why I don't know why it hit that hit that fervor. It's uh probably because people were they were just clamoring for more miscongeniality. Yeah. <laughs> and so they threw Sa- Sandra Bullock into space. Miss miscongeniality three in space. <laughs> yeah, shit goes bad in space. And uh, like that's too she, long of a title. Let's call it gravity. Pumps. What's that? <laughs> she works the catwalk and she busts the criminals. Wow, that trailer. The aliens. I guess I missed that trailer. But you like the Bullock? Yeah, that's the the trailer they show. Is it? Yeah. Well, she's really good. She's good in the movie. I mean, she's pretty much the main character. I mean, uh, George Clooney's there too, but you know, he's, he's typical up. George Clooney. But he's just hanging out. <laughs> you know, hanging out, hitting on the ladies, floating around in space. It's getting all the ladies in space. But it, it's just a, it was a really good movie. I saw it in 3D with my wife, and the entire time I felt like I was at a, like I was in Orlando on a theme park ride. Oh yeah. Of just horrible event after horrible event for a person in space. It's like I don't want to go up in space, but this is amazing to watch. <laughs> the, like, did you? Like, this is terrible. This is horrible stuff. So you didn't want to make you. You no longer want to be an astronaut? Is that childish, childish dream yeah, I finally crushed? I, I waited too long, and now I definitely won't do it. What? When does it take? Does it take place like present day? I assume it's present day. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Okay. There's a. This is no spoiler, but there's a Marvin the Martian toy that floats in space at one point, and so I'm like, it's it's around today, I guess. I heard there's a People... lot of like, kind of space junk jokes. Like there's just a lot of stuff. There, yeah, there's stuff. There's stuff. Golf clubs. In certain scenes, <laughs> golf clubs, uh, uh, beanie babies. It's just everything that you could use to date when this movie was set is floating oh. around. There's like a <laughs> Backstreet Boy CD floating around. <laughs> <laughs> it takes place in the 90s. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't know, but your space is not funny. It's It's no laughing matter. But it's a really good movie. I was glad I saw it in 3D. I don't know about IMAX. And there was, like, D-Box, where I guess your butt will get vibrated on when certain things I've happen. About, I'm afraid to try that out. Yeah, I've heard about D-Box. I haven't, um... um the Giant Bomb guys talk about that quite a bit on their show. And, uh... But, yeah, yeah. Man, there are I don't I don't know if theaters around here that have it, so... Must be maybe in your area. But I haven't looked yeah, up to see if Indianapolis has one or not. My local theater does have it, and there were two, maybe two guys sitting back there, and I couldn't hear anything, so I don't know exactly what the seat was doing, but maybe it's just giving you a, a nice massage. Oh, so it's like, it's just certain seats in like, yeah, normal certain theaters? Seats that in makes the more theater. sense. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a normal theater, but certain seats, like a, their own section in the back, and those chairs are doing something to you. Uh, you know, I don't want to worry about my butt when I'm watching a movie like that. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, if, it, if the movie kind of implies that a lot of you know maybe you're inside of robots like pacific rim i think was the example used on d box being really good but yeah, yeah i'm like i don't know or i heard fast and the furious i heard gravity's like i mean just really tense as far as like you go through some shit as a as a viewer yeah you're, you're kind of up there with her and you're like well what's gonna happen and there are some amazing shots where it doesn't cut away from what's happening and uh, there is a funny joke. Uh, I guess it was like a joke um, news station or something, and they went to interview the director about the movie, and they're like, "So, how difficult was it to get all the equipment up into space and record this movie?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it, 
And in a way, it does feel like that's what was, was happening. It was just like, how the hell were you getting these amazing shots and watching people drift off and then catching up with them and there were yeah, like, no cuts? That. I'm like, this was just amazing to watch. Even if you oh, cool. go watch it and you kind of hate what exactly happens, the story doesn't grab you. Just watching it, I think, is the, the, huh. part, the main takeaway I had from it was just experiencing the movie. That's cool. No, I mean, yeah, the movie's had a lot of legs as far as... Um, I don't know, people just continue to talk about it. Like, it doesn't... Like, it's been out for a while at this point, and I seem to run into a, somebody every week that wants to tell me about Gravity, and um, I should probably go see it, because it can't... I don't know. It can't have... It can't be around too much longer. I mean, well, there's a there's a, there's a few other movies that have come out recently that I, I need to go see, because, I mean, yeah. you said this is the last movie you'll see for a while, so you're not going to go see Thor? That doesn't interest you? I don't know. I, I saw Thor... Uh, from the comfort of my own home mm. sometime after that came out and at a certain point during that movie I can't tell you what happened until yeah. the ending. I just yeah. don't recall I didn't seem to care the only part of that movie I really liked was Loki. when he uh, well Loki was really good <laughs> I mean, people are going crazy over Tom Hiddleston yeah. right now Like everyone's like he's so handsome and stuff Like he's, all, the, new all do- these... he's the new Doctor Who right? it's basically uh, is he? I don't know. <laughs> Just, I, I, I'd believe anything you told me about him. I, people seem to love him so much right now. Combining all my geek fervor into one story. <laughs> but yeah, Hiddleston's but, everywhere. And it's not even really his movie. I heard they had to like add yeah. add Loki scenes after the fact to the movie to, uh, <laughs> to everyone wanted beef Loki. up the Loke. <laughs> beef, beef that Loke. Yeah, that's that's trademarked. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll rent that one too but I had a friend go see it, he's like I'm going to go see the movie at this nice theater and then that's the last thing he ever said to me about it right. so I don't know if, if it was really good and he just is still drooling over it and isn't telling me yet or if it was okay and he's like he doesn't need to know <laughs> I um, won't tell Aaron he won't care Yeah, I want to see I want to see that and Ender's Game is still on my list too so just I'd watch that I uh, don't want you know I don't want the card to get any of my money but at the same time that was my favorite book go- growing up so I kind of have to go see it um, I actually finally ended up watching The Hobbit I don't know why so I think I blame mm. BlizzCon cause like really anytime I get in a Warcraft mood I puts me in a Lord of the Rings mood and I realized um, one I hadn't I hadn't watched The Hobbit yet and um, I think they they must have released a, a, a new trailer for the second one um, here recently because I rewatched that and just got in the got in the mood because that's the other thing is the, is Cumberbatch he's he's right behind yeah. Hiddleston and and the everybody's talking about him race um, that is true and you know that tra- the the trailer with Smaug looks pretty awesome um, so I I was like I need to go finally watch the Hobbit and I've been putting it off because everybody just said you know it's okay. Um, it's long. It's lo- I heard it's okay. It's long. It's not you know. Then all the people you have to detracting. Put an adult diaper on. <laughs> I ended up watching it in three one hour stints because because uh, my fiance has no interest in the movie whatsoever. So I just kind of watched it on my own time. And um, okay, um, but really I loved it. Like I I was a huge you know fan of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings stuff, and I forgot that just like I will just eat all of that up no matter if it's canon or not. So I didn't get too hung up on some of the story stuff that put off some fans. And I just, I had a good time with it. I thought the dwarves were entertaining and really like seeing like, really like Bilbo. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm all in for the, uh, the next few movies. I don't, I still don't know how they're going to stretch it out to three movies, but you know, whatever that was three hours long. So <laughs> that's like Peter Jackson's forte. It's just like stretching things out for so long. Like there's probably at one point, where in the next movie where Bilbo goes to the DMV and he has to take a number and he's like a hundred places back and he just has to wait for like a whole hour. <laughs> just a random DMV. <laughs> I, uh, he's like, I- I'm on a journey. I can't, I don't have time for this. I'm telling all the, uh, all the, all the, all the history of the DMV while he's waiting. You know, yeah. all, the, all the interesting people that have been through here. And uh, I don't know. I eat, I eat that stuff up and I should have known better. I like, I talked myself out of seeing it in theaters. Once it wasn't it was I wanted to see it in the high frame rate stuff that they shot it in. Like I wanted to find oh, a theater yeah. to do that. And once it was out of that theater, I was like, well, you know, I'll catch it some other time. But uh, I was surprised with how much I liked it. So uh, bring on, bring on more of the Hobbit. So, um, 
Yeah. I wonder if they'll ever cut that up for uh, TV at some point. I'm sure. I mean, they always do, you know, their 19-hour extended editions. Maybe he really should do oh, it. Um, the I, I, I paid for an editor edition and let somebody <laughs> else just, like, take a stab at it and, and cut it to yeah. pieces. So. Um, he should just release all the footage and allow people to cut their own movie out of what's there. <laughs> and everyone has their own custom version of the movie. Here's all the footage. Here, oh wow! Be... He just dumps it all on you. I feel like when he's done with this set, and maybe like five years from now, he should just release all of the footage from <laughs> both both movies and just be like, or both trilogies, and be like, make your own. Do what do what you like. Like, there's enough make here. Lord of the Rings. You can you know you can make your kid story. You can make your super dark one. We got everything. Here it is. The history of Middle Earth in film. <laughs> you could just have the Shire party for like twenty four hours straight. <laughs> That's all I would do. Just a looping video on on YouTube. Just a looping video of them partying in the Shire. That would work. Um, besides movies, though, uh, you 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 were at our charity marathon, but then you went somewhere else. Looks like you. Where'd you go? I did. I left. So I made two agreements this year, and they happened to be on the same weekend. <laughs> and so I told a friend I would go to her Halloween party because I didn't go to it last year. And so once I left the marathon and traveled back to the West Lafayette area, I changed in my car under the guise of night, which was tons of fun to do <laughs> for some reason. It was like creepy. Just I'm parked in front of some person's house i don't even know because there's so many cars in front of her house i think i'm like i'm about to switch clothes i think on halloween more people do that than you realize yeah i I didn't find it out of the ordinary but it's just one of those things like i am about to do this last couple years i've had bulky costumes that i did not want to drive in yeah yeah like there was yeah outside the house in the parking lot like uh putting on the rest of the costume i think that's fine yeah, so, I mean, I dressed up as Finn from Adventure Time, so I had, like, the, the blue shorts and a blue shirt and the little headpiece, which I should I should have worn that instead of this beanie <laughs> hat, <laughs> but, but it, that's neither here nor there. But I went into the party. We had a lot of fun. They had some game where you had, like, three stickers on your shirt, and people had to keep offering you drinks to try to get the stickers, and whoever had the most got, like, a lap dance from whoever they wanted at the party. And I'm like, whoa, we are, we are starting strong here, aren't we? <laughs> But I arrived at the party like 30 minutes late, so there was no way I was going to win that. Oh, I thought you were going to say, but, so you were the coolest person at the party because you should Yeah, up. so as soon as I got there, I grabbed all the alcohol and started just cramming it into people's hands and ripping stickers off their outfits. And I'm like, I'm going to win this. <laughs> oh. I, I play for keeps. <laughs> I didn't actually drink any of the alcohol. I just I didn't it. drink anything. I got everyone else drunk so I can get stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone call me Blackfin? That... No one, no, no one addressed that. There are people that didn't even know who I was. <laughs> They're like, I, I don't know who you are. Can you tell me? Is Chad? And then like random. Is Chad being racist person. or is there an actual Black Flynn, f- back Black Finn in the show? I don't believe there is, but I've not seen I every episode convinced. of Adventure Time, so there could be like one episode where there is like a dark Finn. Yeah, I, 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 like yeah, maybe a dark Finn. Probably not a Black Finn, but probably that, yeah. I wouldn't put the dark Finn off of them. So. <laughs> well, I, I'd say that was a su- successful night for you. I'm sorry you didn't win the costume c- contest, though. It, it was a very busy night, but I had a lot of fun, and I'm glad I did both things since I sh- could have done both things last year, but it was fun to just cram it all into one sure. 24-hour period. <laughs> sure. How late were you up? I was up until maybe 3 in the morning, and I slept in a sleeping bag on her floor. When you woke and up? like... When we when you woke up, were we still charity marathoning? Yeah, I think you were still marathoning <laughs> when I got up. I got up at like nine o'clock in the morning and left. Like I drove straight home. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, we were in an interesting state, but yeah, we took we kind of took the week off last week after our uh, successful uh, charity marathon and game jam um, was last last Saturday the second. Uh, we ended up raising uh, almost 1600 bucks for uh, Child's Play, which was awesome. So for those of you that Very donated good. and spread the word, we appreciate that. That, w- that went well. But um, uh, one random bonus to the whole thing was you actually got to come and play with us live, and we'd never actually met in person. 
you know, you can do all this all this that video was, gaming yeah. online. <laughs> and uh, so uh, you and I, you and I got to play um, some Battle Block Theater, which that was a great start to the afternoon. Yeah, I was surprised because um, at first we played some multiplayer stuff with four people, and I didn't realize I thought the story mode was four player, and we did a bunch of like little they have little sports games in there. But you and I played insane mode co op. And um, and our characters became insane. they be, they became very close friends because you got to do a lot of uh, tossing and uh, like toss me to- and, and and like just catching the person and pulling them up to the higher level and just uh, that game was a lot of fun. Very good, and I mean, I almost bought it back when it first came out, and you were playing it on, I believe, a Game Curious. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad I didn't buy it, which is a weird thing to say because I mean, I like the game, but I'm glad I didn't play it. Like re for real until last weekend. Yeah, that was or I, that marathon marathon weekend. I don't think I'd played it. I made maybe played it one more t- time since I uh, kind of when I did the initial playthrough. But I was like, man, this would be so much better with more more people. And I kept waiting for that to happen, and it, and it, and I moved on to other things. So um, yeah, yeah. I I don't know where. Like I was looking through kind of like the beat 'em up, uh, the brawlers. Like we. We played some foul play recently. Castle Crashers is out there, and I was like trying to find something like that um, to kick off the show. And and um, the first battle block wasn't going too well. Like we didn't really like when you do. There's some four player free for all um, modes that aren't that aren't that fun. But we did we did like a team yeah. of four people playing battle blocks version of uh basketball against the computer and that was a lot of like the the cooperative stuff in that game is it just plays really well with uh how like the fighting system is designed and the platforming so um i think that's a game a lot of people kind of pass by and it it's it's a it, it holds up really well it got very rowdy as soon as you started playing those kind of sporting events that basketball game it was it was just crazy to watch, and like the the excitement over the nonsense happening on screen was just <laughs> a- amazing, and especially when it then transitioned to the part with the horses or whatever, yeah. stealing each other's horses. Oh, I forgot like, about the was... horses, and then um, that horse section actually. Um, at any time, two sites are fighting. Two sides are fighting over horses. It uh, l- lends itself to some uh, interesting dialogue, like from people. Uh, reacting to it, so um, yeah, that was uh, that was a lot more fun than than I anticipated. What else? What else did you manage to play while you were still there? We did some Hammer Watch, mm-hmm. which was uh, a little slow at times. I don't know if it's a game that I would say it definitely didn't like hook me any kind of way that I'm like, oh, I want to buy this yeah. as soon as I you know get back you know home or anything like that. But the ending to us playing ha- Hammer Watch was probably one of the most and I hate to overuse this word, like epic things to happen, like a, a very epic ending with it just being me alive in a room full of oh, like a yeah. hundred bugs. <laughs> the the bug train. Yeah, and they were just following me everywhere, and then Josh trying to guide me in one direction, and everyone like, okay, now don't do this. Now you just go here and just you keep moving, and and I'm like dashing because I was playing as I think it was like the paladin or the knight or whatever that's called, and so I had like a quick dash ability, so every time my mana was high enough, I could. Get a nice little dash going through the crowd, and it was just insane. I'm like, if if I survive this, this would be incredible. But yet, I didn't see how would I survive, because I'm pretty sure those bugs would have chased me until the end of time on that level. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually hit that same point when I first played the game. That that bug room was when oh, I can see how this game could be fun because it's it's like it's sillier than I give it credit for. As far as like, it's almost I don't it doesn't really play like a shmup, but it, it's it's a lot yeah. faster action than you. You initially want to play it, and you just you gotta like lay waste to all those all those enemies. But uh, um, but yeah, especially when your bros go down and it's you in that giant room of bugs. I think you handled that as well as anyone could have. And uh, uh, I then, kept my head, and then I tried to listen to everyone's advice, and then I was just going in circles, and I had no idea what my plan should have been. Um, uh, I I still have mixed feelings on Hammer Watch, though. Like it um it could be awesome, but it's um. It's missing something pacing wise. It uh, yeah. It just is. You're killing a lot of the same enemies, and I know you guys are playing it on harder difficulties to start, but it didn't seem like you guys ever got into a groove with that one. No, not not really. Uh, I believe we made allusions to Gauntlet 
before, but at a certain point, it's kind of like I kind of it made me want to play Gauntlet more than continue to play more Hammer Watch. But I mean, it's it's a well put together game. It's just I don't know if it's just the the mood you're in, or maybe it needs a little more going for it. Yeah, but um, I think then we moved on to more dungeoning with Legend of Dungeon. Did had you played that before? Yes, I I played some of that solo. I picked that up I think around the time it came out. And I had some fun with that. And that was another weird one where I thought with more people, uh, it could be more fun. But I I feel like I had more fun yep. playing that one by myself. Yep, yep, I'm with you. I I had high hopes for both of those games, and it didn't, they didn't um, hit it with our crowd. Um, uh, so it was a little bit of a slower start than, than, I, than I wanted. But then we threw you into Spelunky and made one of oh, our man. one of the bigger bets of the of the day. Uh, we're trying to get you to hell, and uh, I wish I had practiced or something before. And I'm like, oh, I haven't played in a while, but Spelunky's my game. I should be okay. And then I did, I did, didn't even come halfway close to <laughs> making an actual hell run. Right. It was just kind of me playing it. But I mean, I went to the mothership, and yeah. I yeah, came we, close. We diverged because I hadn't seen the mothership. There's so much in that game I hadn't seen. It's all some dude named Banana something or other did some eggplant run so oh like, i haven't watched that yet but that uh, that's a crazy thing to do the <laughs> fact that like there's still like people just throwing out terms related to splunky that i haven't heard of like that game is just there's a lot going on as far as just like you know putting the right item on the sacrificial pit and it just changing everything and i said it changes the soundtrack yeah. to like chip tunes and that game's so good that game is so awesome that, uh, yeah, that game, like, on the surface, people are like, oh, it's like a platformer, and I guess the levels randomly generate, and once you die, it's over, and it seems like that's, like, very surface level in oh, yeah. terms of describing Spelunky, but it's crazy just how long, if if you go into it with no spoilers, no one telling you what this does and that does, there are probably so many secrets that could just elude you for years, Yeah, <laughs> because you would never think to try it, or the chances wouldn't... Like just, the game yeah. wouldn't give you that right set of levels to make it work out. It's it's a really well put together game that I think it's going to be on my top list for games yeah. I've played of all time for. It's kind of you know it's just it's kind of perfectly designed. Like I don't even its flaws they don't they don't bother me. They or they like I understand why they're there balance wise. Um, yeah, yeah. I just have tremendous respect for the Spelunky team. It is. That game is kind of timeless too. So, um, I think you know we you t- you took off shortly thereafter. Uh, I think I was playing like some Pac Man and Super Amazing Wagon, <laughs> but no Pac Man was trippy. I think right around the time you were leaving, we after a twenty or thirty minutes of finagling, uh, we got the sixty four hooked up, and um, yeah, my buddy Smitty from Indie Popcom, he came by to play some games with us and talk a little bit with the. Answer some questions about Indie PopCon. That's uh, the the latest kind of geek convention coming to Indianapolis in May, and we're actually gonna uh, be a part of that. And uh, so we were we were talking through that, but we played some WCW versus NWO Revenge. Um, first time I've gotten one of those sixty four wrestling games to uh, um, to actually work. So um, did you? Did I you, loved. Did you I love seeing that game again. I didn't get to play uh, any sixty four. That was the game that was being played when I left. But, well, like, back I, in the day, I own that game. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I own that game. And I'm not even, like, a big wrestling fan, but, like, yeah. I guess I know a lot of wrestlers just, you know, I have a friend who is more of a wrestling fan than I am, but a lot of the names are iconic. But for something about the wrestling games back on the 64 era were just fun to play, regardless of if you followed actual storylines or watched wrestling, like, week to week or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And so it was amazing to watch just from a spectator's point of view, just to watch people play that game and remember, oh yeah, you gained spirit that allowed you to do your <laughs> special attacks. And I'm like, I don't remember how to do that. Everything was just flooding yeah. back to me. And it was just so amazing to watch we had, just the memories. I think it was, it was Coop and I playing Smitty in a tag team match. And we, I, it felt like all of us had played this at heavily at some point in our lives, but we couldn't, we were all remembering different things about it. Nobody could figure out finishing moves. So the match took forever because we also couldn't figure out how to pin one another. But it was yeah. it was pretty hilarious. And, I, I mean, I I used to be into wrestling in the 80s when I was a kid, like when it was Saturday morning or whatever, and, you know, you watch Hulk Hogan and all that stuff. And I was into it at that point. But I took a long break, and these games, 
the 64 wrestling games are what got me back into wrestling there for a couple of years. So um, that was that was really fun to revisit. Uh, we had a good time with that. Um, then we switched gears while we were actually doing the interview. Uh, we made Coop play some uh, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Oh, man. I remember that game, too. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, we also <laughs> played some Rogue Squadron immediately afterwards, but the graphical uh... leap from Shadows of the Empire to Rogue Squadron is... It's pretty intense, but um, that's huge. Yeah, he kept trying to play the game on Jedi, and that game is hard. That game is it's hard. So he he was struggling on that Hoth level, but that that is still one of my iconic uh, Nintendo sixty four moments. Is is it was the intro to Super Mario sixty four, the the, go, the camera going around the castle. That's like my big standout moment. Um, the Hoth opening level of Shadows of the Empire, which is just completely unforgiving that game is that game is hard um and then wave race 64's water those are like my three big <laughs> nintendo 64 uh, moments i remember all those things um i played a lot of 64 i play a lot of stuff in general but just like i don't even know where my 64 is i own one and i let my cousin borrow it once i think and he brought it back and i have no idea where it's been ever since but so i've been able to play a lot of my 64 games yeah, my 64 doesn't work, so I've got to I've got to get back into that, but get that figured out. But um, you know the uh, the the vehicle stuff still holds up a little bit. I mean, they, those those are some blurry ass textures, but <laughs> the core gameplay is fine uh, when you get it figured out. And Rogue Squadron held up a little, obviously held up a little bit better. But man, yeah, the third person action stuff with uh, Dash Rindar and Shadows of the Empire that is a uh, that's a little rough. Um, that is some early yeah, is. early ass shooting on the uh, on the 64 but uh that was kind of funny to to go through there and then and then we had a trio of just fantastic multiplayer excitement we switched over to the xbox and played some bomberman okay. live um uh, so, so trials evolution and then oh no the world's most epic lantern runs in insanely twisted shadow planet um First of all, Bomberman, wow. it had been so long, I assumed this game might kind of fall on its face with us, like we, that we wouldn't get into it. But we we got a little too into it. And that was like when the screaming started and just <laughs> like, this was also, I started to turn on Smitty because he kept winning and, in, you know, he was using cheat codes or something. He was just dominating <laughs> us. And, um, but yeah, we, we played these games for quite, quite a while. And uh, that was some of my favorite moments was just, that that trio of multiplayer games was almost the height of our energy. I think it was around midnight, so we've been we've been going for almost That's twelve hours time. at that point. Uh, but that was a really good time. Um, and uh, I'm look I'm cutting some of these highlights, so we'll, we'll, those will tell the story better. Tri- trials is trials. We had a good time with that. Yeah. But a, um, have you ever played? Well, first, have you played Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet? I think I played a demo of it or something i don't okay. feel like i don't know if i own it or not but i know i own it now but back when it first came out i don't remember ever playing it to completion i mean it's i know a, what that game is you know it's like little little ufo guys uh metroidvania exploration stuff getting power-ups to you know um advance through the world and um there's a lot it's a lot more of like navigating the environment than blowing things up you get weapon power-ups it's got a really nice silhouetted art style it's very very beautiful yeah. And then, like, six months later, I figured out or found out that it has a multiplayer mode. Josh became obsessed with it. It's called Lantern Run, and it's four-player co-op where um, basically each player has a, a giant lantern that you use your little grapple hook to carry with you. And okay. you are being chased by a giant, you know, a giant creature. And you have to navigate through the level and then, like... Um, drop the lanterns to like pull away rocks to make openings so you can all continue and just enemies start coming at you and it just gets really chaotic really quickly and like this sounds hectic <laughs> yeah and uh, by the end of the first section usually you're already down to one only one person has a lantern left and you have to keep that lantern alive because the goal is to survive like 5,000 meters or whatever the, the measurement is in the game and we didn't come okay. close we didn't come close but it, the drama was high the emotions were high and like after every round, we were just we were just emotionally drained from playing this game, and we had to go one more time because we kept getting better. 
and it was it was intense. It was uh, S- Smitty was actually trying to leave. I think right after we started the game, and he just kept going going back for one more, and he just didn't want to let it go. And I was nice. Like, that that kind of stole the show uh, for me for for a little while. I highly recommend going back and revisiting that game. I can't. I don't think insanely twisted shadow planets on i want to say it's on psn i don't think it ever showed up on pc i could be wrong it, it is on pc okay. yes all right is it it is there so I, I i need to see these highlights really i missed out on some stuff as i would i've been told <laughs> yeah we were on a roll there oh, it is on steam all right fair enough oh, i don't remember that popping up yeah so that's yeah check that out it's on pretty much everything now but uh, if you've got local that's great local multiplayer um and where do, we like go, where do we go from there? So we said goodbye to Smitty. Um, shut down the Xbox for a little bit. Let's see here. Oops, go up with the wrong way. Uh, we played a lot of games. No. <laughs> um, at, at some point there were trucks oh, in Europe, I guess. Yes. Shut down the consoles, made the switch to the PC. I think we were actually, this was our longest down time. It took us 30 or 40 minutes to get the trucks going. But... Euro Truck Simulator 2. Um, little side story. This is the only game I ended up buying for the marathon. Because I, like, <laughs> just the way our computers were set up, I needed a copy, and Josh really wanted to play this. Josh came prepared yeah. with his, his his flannel shirt and his trucker hat <laughs> and his pedals and his force feedback steering wheel controller for the PC. Oh, Holy shit, man. man. I didn't I, know he had all that. I didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, and this was... This should be the most unwatchable, boring game, but a combination of how into it that Josh gets and just some of the just, you know, the ridiculous facts that you can, you know, you stream European radio stations into your truck um, <laughs> and then just play them by the rules because it, I mean, it just looks like an open world where you could, you know, just drive your big rig around and cause havoc and break all yeah. kinds of traffic laws. But you want to, you know, you, you, you get your hauling job and you just, you want to, you want to take that, take whatever your cargo is across across the country, and we started in Berlin, and and you want to make it there, and you want to make sure that when you're delivering your package, that you 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 know you, you do the perfect parking job, and uh, I don't know if there's any drama in that game, but we made a lot of drama and had a really good time with it. I just remember seeing some crazy stuff. I did watch some of that footage, and yeah, Josh trying to like park his. Park his truck. You got to straighten it out, man. You got to straighten it out. Yeah, he had to straighten it out. He was like way off, and I'm pretty sure he cheated and was like, I'm done. They yeah. were happy. Yeah, there is, a, there uh, is a just, yeah, a, a quick a quick shortcut there. Uh, oh, uh, He got hit by a car. He hit a car. There, there were some collisions. <laughs> <laughs> he got hit by a car, and it wasn't his fault, so he's trying to wait at the scene to, for the cops yeah. to come and just Call like, the cops. clear his name so he doesn't have to pay a fine to who, whoever's <laughs> running the truck from. We got some Halloween skins for the trucks. Um, you know, I, the, the, my favorite little touch is that every time another semi would drive by, Josh would you know wave at him and honk his horn. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. It was also like our three o'clock in the morning game where things were just starting to get silly. Um, and then um, it was pretty you great. know we're all you know Josh has played this game very very seriously, and yeah. there was a time during his when he was unemployed. That he played this game for you know eight hours solid, and I was like, "Did you just do a full day of hauling? Like, like <laughs> he did you didn't get paid work. for that?" Yeah, and um, so Volunteer yeah, we're all driving. We're all you know in, in support of his uh, truck skills, and assume you know th- he is a he is a professional Euro truck simulator also too also. Um, but he, you know things got <laughs> we got a little tired. I I took a little break and. Um, our, our in-game trucker actually got fined for uh, staying up too late, which we thought was kind of ironic at 5 in the morning or whatever oh. time was for us. Uh, so eventually Josh took a Makes break, sense. and Co- Coop actually took over the wheel. And he only played for like 30 or 40 minutes, but Coop managed to pull off the perfect parking job, like his first attempt, and just just changed the entire uh. my entire reality of Euro Truck Simulator. So... Um, I can't believe that game was that entertaining. I really can't. <laughs> Came from a master line of truck parkers. <laughs> and we little, never little knew. Little known fact. Little known fact about we Coop. Did not know. Uh, <laughs> um, let's not, not much, actually. We were kind of 
wiped out for the next the next while there. I played some Super Castlevania and Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the Wii U, uh, but eventually handed it off to Ethan, uh, where he got some Batmaning in and some No More Room in Hell, which I still need to watch because I was kind of in and out of sleep at that point. I need to watch that one still. Um, and then um, we we kind of closed out the show first. We did a big chunk of Lego Marvel superheroes. We were passing that that controller around. Uh, that ended up being pretty fun and pretty pretty silly. That's a that's a game I'd recommend. But um, I would like to play that. I yeah, highly highly recommend that, especially in, in co op as well. It's got some interesting, uh, an interesting dynamic camera going on for the co op mode. But uh, yeah, but we close the show probably. Um, at this tops year one. We close the show with like a massive Super Mario Kart sixty four race. Um, year two probably mistakenly closed the show with Dead Island, which was a lot of fun, but also kind of not really in the spirit of Charity Marathon after a while, because we were... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but Super Pole Riders. So, Pole Riders makes a lot of... Uh, has made a lot of appearances on our live streams. Super Pole Riders is the, <laughs> the, the edition of the game that's going to be coming out in the Sports Friends compilation that has... Uh, Johan, nice. Sebastian Joust, Hakra, and a couple oh. others. There was a Kickstarter for it. So we had the alpha version of Super Pole Riders and had just an epic Super Pole Riders tournament to close the show, and uh, it was it was it was fantastic. Um, if you watch if you watch anything from the marathon, watch that 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 clip because that was basically everybody playing, um, passing the controllers around. Really good time and a, a really fun last hour to kind of wrap up the day the day on a on a good note. So. Uh, I don't think that's I've... a really fun game. <laughs> have you actually have, have you played it? I've I've played maybe I've played Pole Riders. Yeah. So I don't know what's different between Pole and Super Pole, but I know I have an idea how that game works, and that's just it's so goofy mm-hmm. that I imagine putting Super in front of it just makes it even goofier. And I I do need to watch what happened there. I mean they they've got you know they bumped up the graphics to be more like vector graphics, but there's a, now a by the goals, there is now a dip in the uh, in the terrain, so it's no longer just flat all the way around. Where it it makes it a little bit harder to defend at the last second, which I think bumps up the scoring. But uh, but wow, yeah, that yeah. game has some ridiculous physics, and it's it's a great time. Uh, you can play Pole Riders for free on uh, I think it's foddy.net, f o d d y dot net uh, in the browser, uh, and then I believe the Sports Friends uh, collection is coming out next year. So. That was Charity Marathon was a lot of fun. I felt really good about the the game selection there. We even had I think Coop beat a couple games. The, he beat Devil May Cry in the background. Uh, Gifford beat Very Uncharted good. One. Um, I I wish we'd gotten to do more with the game jammers, but we'll figure that out. Okay, there's some technology hurdles that I did not anticipate. Uh, but we got we got an interview with uh, a couple developers, and uh, the the game jammers got to come in and hang out for a while. So all in all excellent event i uh, look forward to keeping 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 that growing next year so um again thanks everybody for the support of our charity marathon um uh, we did great things for child's play and we appreciate that okay so that was a lot of video gaming um a ton of it a marathon's worth and i took last week off so what what else have what else have you been been playing in the meantime so i am still steady playing pokemon after getting the credits to run there's yeah. still some stuff to do in that game it's it might very well there... be one of the best pokemon games yet that seems to be like i know people like and i it, i make jokes and people make jokes that you know it's just another pokemon game but it 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 is what it is but they've also sounds like they 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 brought their a game with it too like they don't definitely they, they don't need to rock the boat but it, it just seems like it's a pretty pretty solid product and nintendo at this point knows that all their money's coming from 3ds, so let's you know, let's do the best Pokemon we can, and I don't I don't hear anybody complaining about it. Yeah, it's just yeah, they've they've got a real nice like solid system of addictive gameplay there. I mean, there's like 700 and uh, almost 720 Pokemon, and so even after you've you know finished all the gems and become the champion, there's still all these Pokemon to catch, and they've got natures and. I think when the games first started, it was pretty much, you know, here, oh, you know, here's a, here's a Pokemon, you catch it, you don't really know much about it, but you're not going to put a, a whole lot of time into trying to catch, like, a million of them to find out which one's the best, because it, it was all working behind the scenes, 
in terms of you know generating their stats and stuff like that. But now they're giving you like all these indicators on oh you can this one's got great you know values. It's a potential contender in the competitive scene. It's got the right <laughs> natures that buff this and that. And it, it's so like when people think about Pokemon, they they tend to think about kids. Like oh kids love Pokemon, but it's there's so much stuff packed into this game for adults that just love numbers and stats that it is insane. And I I don't even reach the full spectrum of you know, that, that side of things. I just kind of, oh, I like this one, and it's good enough, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> and But it's I, I'm still sticking with it. It's just fun to play. I sat there for hours last night just trying to get all the fossils in the game so I can get all of the Animal prehistoric Crossing. Pokemon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I, when I was done playing Animal Crossing, I played Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how, how is... Nintendo needs to make more crossovers with its game worlds with Animal Crossing. Like, they if really you could find should. if the fossils were actually Pokemon, I think that'd be kind of a genius stroke, honestly. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I had no idea there were fossils in Pokemon. That's kind of man collecting all seven hundred twenty. <laughs> that's a full time job. That is, and I think there are some of them you can't even get to yet, and that's like part of their ingenious strategy. Like they're going to introduce <sighs> a Pokemon bank where you can pay, <laughs> and it might be like a monthly subscription that allows you to, and it, it, you can maybe pay it once and get everything you need to do with it done in a month, but you can store Pokemon to the cloud and then bring them across you know, games to your 3DS to get all the ones you need to fill out the Pokedex in X and Y. I'm ready it's that. ridiculous, but people will do it. I'll probably do it, because there are Pokemon I can't get now that I, I want to have, and I'm not like really big into doing the competitive told, stuff, but it's like I need to. Catch I just want to have this Pokemon. Yeah, I need to catch them all. I need to have them. I was. I want them all in 3D on my 3D. Whatever they're doing is working on you. But it's it's like I you Genius. know I look at I look at Skylanders and how much of a runaway success that has been, and it's just like you do you kind of wait for that other shoe to drop with Nintendo where they really figure out how to you know they've. You know they've made a couple. They've made a couple dollars off of Pokemon over the years, but like you just feel like they could figure out something just truly nasty and just make all kinds of all kinds of money if they're if they figure out the right balance with I don't know with like you said with their Pokedex and hidden Pokemon and yeah because there are some there are some Pokemon whales out there that'll spend some spend some sweet cash to get to get some Pokemon so. It's it's really scary. Like there's a line that they could easily cross, and then Pokemon would just go into like insane yeah. financial territory. And they're they I think they're like they're close to it, but they haven't quite crossed yeah. it. And I'm glad they haven't because I mean I think I benefit more because once once they reach that that kind of Skylanders territory, I, I think I'd have to throw my hands up and be like I'm out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but. Uh, I like it the way it is, and they keep me buying it even when releasing two versions. And I think almost, I think for a while I would buy both versions. Are but you gonna buy the second version? You're not gonna? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Are this you gonna? Time. Um, I, mean, I don't know. Um, convince a friend to buy theirs, and like, or or <laughs> make some friend that you ditch later just to get the benefits of you have you have why it's. So, yeah, I have Y. It's almost not even necessary since there's online, and that's why the only reason why I'm not going to buy X is because you can trade for all the ones you don't have no. in your version through and not even know the people. I was going to say, do you want to get there, uh, put a, a friend code plea out right now to help you <laughs> finally catch? If I knew my friend code, I'd throw it down in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> got to memorize that, that memorized. Real Pokemon players memorize a friend code. Get on. Your social, remember your social security number and your your Pokemon or your 3DS friend code. Remember both of those. Don't get them confused. I wish I could remember. I mean, if I could like swap out my 3DS friend code with the the fact that I still have my ICQ number memorized, I would like gladly trade those uh, those places in my memory. But um, nope, I can remember <laughs> shit I don't need. There's a no. doctor somewhere. Maybe that can hypnotize you and make that work. <laughs> what else you been playing? So I have been sailing those uh, those dangerous waters in need, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. We need to talk about this, yes. Cause... And we need to talk about this game because it is the best pirate game <laughs> that I've played this year. <laughs> but it is not a very amazing Assassin's Creed game. But it's not a bad... Is it a bad Assassin's Creed game? 
it is a it's better than three, okay. but that's mostly because of pirates, and they've refined some of the gameplay that they messed up in three. Because like stealth was horrible in Assassin's Creed Three, like it was almost non-existent, to the point that I'm like, who sat here and said, Dude, to I'm get a hundred percent sync? So like, mad, how, so mad that I yeah. didn't have more reasons to use that fucking spear. Last, what was that thing called? The rope dart. The rope dart. Like, yeah. They never gave me really a good excuse to use that thing, and that thing was vicious. But, um. Yeah, I mean, yeah, everything hardly ever made sense to use it. Everything I've been reading about this game, I want to play it for the pirating and the animals and the fact that it's not a broken Assassin's Creed experience. Like, I at this yeah. point, I have said fuck it to the story. I don't give a shit. I don't care where they're going with it. I will just enjoy. Like, actually, get rid of the animus for me at this point. Just let me play this dude, and I don't even care about <laughs> the, the story beyond that. But just like. As an isolated yearly experience, a known quantity, it doesn't seem to be busted. It seems like they've sped up. I, I, I'm saying all this from the reviews I've read. It seems like they sped yeah. up and just get to the action and let you let you let you get to the pirate. Definitely. And I feel yeah, like if there are 15 to 20 hours where I enjoy myself just pirating, you know what? I want to check this game out. Yeah, they they they. I, I mean, it's easy for them to get a checklist of everything that's wrong with Assassin's Creed 3 because it's all over the internet <laughs> yeah. on any given forum. <laughs> so they fixed a lot of that. The game starts quicker. You're you're a pirate. I mean, the pirate, the main character in this game, his name is like Edward Kinway. Mm-hmm. So he's related to the people from 3. He's like the grandfather right. of stuff shit you don't even care about anymore. Yep. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's like he gets himself in the middle of the Templars and the assassins, but in a way he kind of doesn't even give a shit. And he's like, "Oh, I'm a pirate, and I want to get rich." And so he's kind of in their affairs purely for his own means. And so I'm like, "This really works for me because at this point, where I thought Assassin's Creed was going to go did not happen mm-hmm. with their story. I I don't know why they did with it with their story what they did, but because they I'm like I like the way this game feels to play, and so." Let me play this game without being mad that the story has gone into a very shitty direction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, I I don't blame, well, I don't blame anyone because it's changed, like, overall creative director so much. Like, you know, at one well, point, there was a vision for a trilogy that they were going to tightly wrap up, but this game became such a runaway hit for Ubisoft that, you know, business kind of took it over. So, you know, you can complain about that for... for you know, as much as you want, but like ultimately, my problem with Assassin's Creed Three was one: I wanted to, well, I wanted it to be great. I wanted it to be just fantastic. It's it's a really good game. But two, it, a lot of the Assassin's Creed games have this problem uh, when compared when I compare it to other open world games like uh, uh, Saints Row Four uh, in particular, or well, Saints Row recently, and even Grand Theft Auto. Um, a lot of these open world games, they you know, your story missions or, you know, some of your featured side quests, they have really great payoffs. Like, whether it's yeah. story-wise or epic moments or boss fights or s- some sort of twist that that just gives you a kind of a wow moment or, a, like, you're cheering your guy on or, you, you know, you, you've, or you feel terrible or something awesome happens, good for better or for worse. I feel like in Assassin's Creed that that never happens. It's always just no. It's like all the quests they're all kind of just they just kind of happen. They're not I don't go through anything. There's no extreme highs or lows. So ultimately it just it kind of becomes a chore more so than some other open world games and I just I don't know if Assassin's Creed 4 has that but Assassin's Creed 3 was just flat emotionally because of that. It really was. Assassin's Creed 3 is like the, it's a small world of Assassin's games where you're you're just like, you're on a tour, you're on a guided tour of stuff happening. You're like, oh, hey, I remember Paul Revere and, oh, I remember (laughs) this battle, you know, up on, you know, we're on on that hill that I learned about in history and they're fighting it. And like, oh, Connor's there? And Connor's here? And Connor's there? And he's like murdering people and no one's ever talked about him before but i mean at a certain point you you put all that behind you're like it's a video game and they want you to have fun and remember stuff but that the investment that you had to things happening was just so non-existent that you're you just want to do fun assassin stuff Mm -hmm. but there was just so much story happening in three and none of it made any real 
sense, nor should you have cared about it. And then, and then the the assassin moments just didn't have the highs anymore. And um, no. So my question is: Does Black Flag have some extremely awesome moments? Black Flag for me, all revolving around just the fact that you're a pirate has had some incredible moments, and it's, and most of that just comes from the naval play. Mm-hmm. This is the fact that you're still they take one of the best parts of three. You get to get your own boat, and you're sailing around on it. You upgrade it, and you can just get into fights with any damn ship on the ocean at any <laughs> given time. And there are tons of missions around that too, but it's just it's just so amazing. And sometimes there's like some dynamic weather happening, and sometimes it's more scripted. But like you can be in the middle of a storm with the like lightning flashing and the rain pouring down, and you are just fighting a high-level boat, and you don't know if you're going to make it or not, and it gets so intense and it, it just feels it's the fact that the controls feel they're they feel right cuz you're you're on you're piloting a boat you're guiding a boat through the waters and the waters are going crazy and the waves are coming this way and that way and so that's i think part of assassin's creed land gameplay is like you don't really tend to have problems fighting anybody or murdering people it's like oh everyone's just really good at you know killing each other but when they put you on the boat and you have to sink another boat, that's when I feel the most, you know, off my game. I'm like, this boat can win at any given moment against me. I don't feel like, oh, I'm, I can just counter everything the boat does. It, but, I mean, I've had boats launch, like, 50 cannons at me at once. <laughs> and I'm like, I have lost this before it's begun. <laughs> um, I mean, the yeah, the boat stuff in Assassin's Creed 3 was fantastic. But it was all so inconsequential that it, it yeah. always it really felt like side missions it really felt like this doesn't matter and i also just like didn't believe the his sudden abilities to you know be an awesome naval captain but um um but yeah if it's tied in and it becomes if you could just like go whole hog into the boating i'm you know like i said i'm not expecting 40 hours of greatness from this game which is the difference yeah probably like i I had that expectation of three, but if I can get 20 hours of greatness and just fantastic pirate action, um, I, I think that sounds pretty good compared to like my other experiences that I, I could be playing right now. So I've come around. Yeah, I uh, was totally writing off this series at this point last year. So um, I'm looking forward to, I think I'm going to end up grabbing this on the PC, depending on how my PlayStation four stuff goes, which we'll talk about later. But um, I think your exuberance and, and, and some of the other reviews I've read uh, said this 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 might um, scratch a pirate itch for me that I didn't know I I had. So I think so. I mean, if, if you liked playing Assassin's Creed, but you know three didn't do it for you, and for a lot of people it didn't. I think this is a good step back in the right direction, and, and it's not. I still think they have Assassin's Creed where it should be, but there's just so much fun gameplay in this one. Cool. And I even I tried the multiplayer over the weekend, and I didn't try any multiplayer in three after liking it in yeah. You know, that's uh, always been good. Brotherhood, and, and I I think it's really good here too. So there's a lot of fun that I'm having with this game, even if the story is just kind of you know a pile of fish heads at this point. But uh, um, it's fun to play. Um, do you like the main character? I am okay with the main character. He he, he doesn't. I don't know. I don't know if I want to okay. go down this okay. road. Okay. <laughs> he he exists. He's okay. Okay. I understand. Um, anything else you want to... Any other games you're playing you want to give a shout-out to? Uh, a quick shout-out to a game you're also playing. Tiny Death Star. Oh, shit. Tiny Death Star is fun. Oh, shit. We're talking about it now. Oh. Uh, Hold and up. I had given up on these kinds of games on my phone. Oh, there was like up. a period where I was playing games on my phone like every day. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't come back to these games where it wants me to restock things and put people places. I'm like, I just can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm burnt out. But something about why well, I, I know exactly what it is about Tiny Death Star. And it's the fact that it's Star Wars <laughs> that just makes me want to yep. play it. Oh, yeah. I, like I said, when I, I must have gone down some... I don't know, generic geek hole this weekend where I was all about Lord of the Rings and all about Star Wars. When I To the point where I discovered all of these digital video services I subscribe to, none of them have Star Wars. 
George Lucas is an That's asshole. That's crazy. Yeah, it is not available. I, I know they're on Netflix at some point, but they have they have since come off. So nowhere can you rent or buy digitally Star Wars, uh, at least from what the Roku has access to. So um, anyway. Weird. Uh, you know, I, I watched Tiny Tower from a distance as far as just one of those games that yeah, actually, I think I kind of lumped it in with Farmville at the time. I didn't really understand what it was, but a lot of people were playing it. You know, uh, a commerce simulator of some sort, like a you know a, a, a focused Sim City, if you will, but all in one building. And uh, you know, I was always kind of curious about it. I could get into you know if it if it edges more to that Sim City style, old school Sim City. We'll talk about the new one. Um, that's that's <laughs> a game that I could get into, but for whatever reason, you know, Tiny Tower kind of came and went, and I never tried it out. But fuck, you you slapped that Death Star skin on it, and you had my attention to the point where uh, I think Kotaku actually ran this article, and I rarely give them shout-outs, but they had the instructions for me yeah. of they announced this game, all, I want to say two or three months ago, and then they said it was out, but it was only out in Australia, and they never said when it was going to be released here in the States. Uh, which yeah, I didn't know. The game came out last week. Uh, in the states, but um, I got antsy and um, I bought this free to play game uh, as uh, someone who pe- lived in Australia for like an hour on my uh, on my iP- iP- iPad. So uh, <laughs> I played it. I played it like for a week before it came out here, um, and then I restarted once it came out here because I was not convinced I was going to get the achievements um, if I kept continuing the Those with the achievers. Uh, I have yet to put any money in it. Have you put any money into this game? Never. Uh, even with <laughs> Tiny Tower and all their other games, I have never put any money into it. And I, I, I think they they make good stuff, and I like it, yeah. and I like to support it. But I mean, there's a difference between I will pay a dollar to own this game, I would... and I will give them a dollar for to actually buy something in the store. I feel like that's a slippery slope. Oh, I would I would rather give them a tip jar, like then. Yeah. Um, like, I'll give them a dollar and not get anything in return versus, you know, oh, I, I'm going to get a bunch of credits or something if I buy something for two ninety nine and I, mean, it, I don't want to do that. At some point, the way this game plays, like, it plays while you're not playing it. It has a very Animal Crossing nature to it that I, that I enjoy, the fact that it just kind of keeps going in the background. Uh, I've got my alerts turned off enough that it doesn't bother me, but I just tend to check in on the game about every 45 minutes or so. Um, and, yeah, you, know, you play it after you get your initial, you know, your initial setup going, you know, get a couple, you know, put a half hour into it just to get everything rolling. You, you know, you, you just check in on it once an hour or once every few hours and, you know, make your adjustments and stock your stores back up with goods and move some people around to try to get some VIPs and, um, you know, uh, and the music. That music is incredible. <laughs> I could listen to this all day. Wait for it. <laughs> My best part. Best part's coming up. Hold on. Actually, I missed it. We already missed the best part, but it's all good. We might have, but yeah, I don't want to play it forever. But I it's a part where it kind of skips a beat, and it, it's just fantastic. Um, but yeah, if this wasn't Star Wars, I wouldn't be as into it. But it just it, stra- it scratches a lot of nostalgic um, um, itches there, and. It's the game that I can just play and not play it. Like, it's actually replaced... Usually my casual game is Words with Friends. I usually have five or six of those games always going on, but I've noticed my downtime. I have abused my Words with Friends friends. Now I'm just playing Tiny Death Star while other things are going on. (laughs) We're going to cut the music part out. (laughs) Create more for the live crowd. Yeah. uh, But I'm surprised at how much I've played it. Like... I think it probably has another one to two weeks lifespan left with me because I'm about yeah. I've I've hit my twentieth level I think uh, in in the in the tower but um um and then it just you know it is it is repetitive you what do you I don't you don't really know what you're not really playing a game at some point but uh not really I don't know it's it's awesome for what it is like it works. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like the Star Wars skin. I like the music, everything about it. It does a few things that Tiny Tower itself didn't do, but I played Tiny Tower for such a long time, and my wife was playing it too, that you know, I don't know if this is going to be one of those games where I'm not sure how big this tower can get, but I just don't see myself maxing this one out either. Yeah, it, uh, 
I, I keep, I keep wondering, like, on my way out the door, do I give him like five bucks? You know, it's yeah, just like, I really, I've put like, I've put like ten hours into this game, like, yeah. I don't know. It. it uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I always feel like with these free to play games, you're always kind of doing that battle of, uh, with with the developers of when you know when do you give in. But like, there's there's some point like I just I won't I don't want to actually use the money. Like I said, give me a tip jar. But uh, anyway, that's how I feel. Like I I would give them the money if I didn't have to get anything in return. It felt like I was buying something from the store. I just want to give them like a tip. Like oh, I enjoyed this. I'm having fun with it. And I'm sure. Um, that they would be happy to set up something like that, like a tip jar, but they probably think they're doing you more of a favor. Like, oh no, take the credits, take the you know, take the stuff, and think of it as a tip with free yeah. stuff in return. And I'm like, I I don't know. At some point, I probably will because I I do enjoy the Star Wars iteration and yep. Nimble Bit does some good stuff. Yeah, on the phone, they're so. fun. They're fun. It's, I guess it's just two dudes too, or I read that and maybe that's a old story, but um, I like I like that that side of it anyway, but. Yeah, I'm glad that game happened. That it seemed really silly, but it is totally it's really silly. As far as just it is a reskin of an existing game, but this Star Wars one works for me. Um, I've you know I've been playing a, a little bit of stuff. Like I said, I'm still going through Bioshock Infinite. Hopefully, finishing that up this week so I can move on to DLC. Um, and uh, we both we both played a little bit of uh, Desktop Dungeons. That yes. Well, I had a, little, a lot of dungeoning recently, and. Uh, that game's fun. I um, it's really fun. I think I'm. I don't know if you played. Is it Dungeon Dash? Dungeon Dashers? Dash? Whatever. There was. Another I did one. not play that one. Um, that one's. Uh, not, I think you played that one, right? Yes. That one's not a yeah. roguelike, though. And I think. Okay. I think I'm gonna keep going back to desktop dungeons more. More so. Just uh, like you said, you get in and out of dungeons in ten minutes or less. Um, everything is super sped up. It's really simple looking. Yeah. I streamed it a little bit yesterday. Uh, it's really hard too. Um, it, it can get kind of crazy. <laughs> um, so it's very, you know, oh yeah. I mean, everybody's been cr- comparing it to it's a dungeon crawling minesweeper. Basically, you're moving around a yeah. grid, fog of war. You can't see see anything. You try to find enemies that are at your level so you can use a combination of your attacks and your magic to crush them. And when you take damage or lose magic you get it restored every time you reveal a couple new tiles. So it becomes a balance of how much do you explore before you attack this guy to heal up, but making sure that you're saving up enough heals for when you fight the, the, the boss later in the, in the, in the dungeon. But, uh, um, that this game's been out for a while, but it just jumped on steam. And, um, like I said, there are a few, a few of these kind of fast dungeon crawlers out there, uh, lately. And, um, this one was a lot of fun right out of the gate for me. Yeah, and I played, I think there was a free version, like you said, it's been out for a while in some form. I think, believe there was an alpha out that was free, and I tried it some time ago, and they came back up onto my radar somehow, maybe on Twitter. And so I, on the final day of their beta, I bought it for like a 10% discount. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is a game I've played before. And, uh, They've done. They've changed so much since I played it the first time. I believe, I believe before it was just you would go through a dungeon and you maybe you would pick a random class and race and whatever, and you kind of just go through the dungeon. But now like it's got the kingdom exists, so yeah, there's there's progression to it, and that's always something I've enjoyed about games that kind of do the you know it's they're quick and easy to play, and they've kind of got these roguelike sensibilities about them. Yeah. I've liked that something will continue to progress even though the characters themselves do not. And so uh, building up your kingdom and unlocking new classes and things like that definitely brings, you know, a thrill to playing, you know, maybe just one more game in the hopes that you can get that thing you want, that new class or that new race or upgrade a building or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was surprised at the, the depth there. I thought it was literally going to be random, random dungeons, random character setup. And holy crap, the the character portraits in that game are hilarious too. Uh, they they are, are so exaggerated. They are <laughs> kind of creepy. There are some worn out looking wizards in that world. Yeah. Um, just a little too much time at Hogwarts. I kind of want to get to the new releases and the PlayStation Four stuff. So just shout out to yeah, other yeah. games I'm playing. Um, Pixel Junk Shooter uh, that just popped back up on that popped up on PC. Played that a little bit on the PS3. 
that game's fantastic. I got we got I got a little deeper into it during my playthrough yesterday. Got into the ice ice stage and man, those uh, that game is designed purely around its liquid physics, but it's it's awesome. It loves fun. its liquids. It is uh, it, the game is a good time. I played a little bit of King Arthur's Gold. Um, I don't really know what to say about that one, but um, it's. Did I was ever, hoping you would have something to say about it. Did you ever? I don't know. Did you ever play the game Sold At? Like, there's, there's this. We've played. I have not played it. It's kind of like those arena-based, two D platformer, multiplayer, just chaotic games. Um, what's another one? Um, Scott Studios did one, the YP Two KX or yeah. I was just thinking of that one. Yeah. Okay. I so played that one. It's a little bit like that, um, except this is all medieval stuff with different different classes and you know you build you build fortresses and you can tear them down so it's i believe it's from the guys that made sold at i could be confusing that now that i'm thinking about it but i'm pretty sure, sure okay it's those guys and they they made more of a uh, accessible experience but it's it's it, it, at its core it's medieval multiplayer madness but with like pixelized 2d uh platforming characters with you know knights and archers and very very fast pace and um great great explosions great gore like for you know 8-bit graphics and that kind of thing and um and, you know, i think it's like 10 bucks or less but i i, I played a little yeah. bit of it and want to revisit that i'll stream that but i'm hoping to get some multiplayer going on that as well so uh keep an eye out for that one and then um, see that in action i did beat the second world in rayman legends so i got my second music stage finally <laughs> kind of disappointed in that second music stage that was uh, that's not the that's not the best one. I'm sure it's not, not. but uh, that was a, that was kind of a downer. But I'm I'm trying to beat that game in chunks uh, while while we get through the end of the year here. I did hear that Rayman Legends is coming to the next gen platforms as well. So I saw that. That's crazy. That, that could spring. look really good. It already it already looks like amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. On current gen. Um, but yeah, uh, I like I said, kind of took the week off last week, and now we're turning to. Bioshock, and then I will Bioshock Infinite, and then I'm gonna try to stream The Last of Us. Uh, I'm about halfway through that game, and try to get that Ooh. wrapped up before our Game of the Year discussions. And then I'm breaking into PS3 and PlayStation 4 streaming. Uh, right now, it looks like uh, Andy will be streaming as soon as UPS delivers his PlayStation 4 on Friday, and then I will tag in towards the evening hours uh, uh, with my PlayStation 4. And we had a, I posted a little. Um, a reply to all, all piece from our email conversations with all the guys that, and our takes on what launch games to pay attention to, and you know, the more I think about, it, the more I'm just buying this system because I know I'm going to get it anyway, and I'm trying to spread my money <laughs> out between. I need to buy one of the systems this fall and one of the systems in the spring because you look at the the launch lineup. There's there's some stuff I want to play, but nothing that sells the system because. When it came no. down to it, the game I'm most excited for is a free game on PlayStation 4. I'm, I cannot wait to play Resogun, which is essentially <laughs> yeah. like Geometry Wars slash uh, Stardust, Hyper Stardust meets Defender. So, like Super Defender, whatever you want to call it. So many particles. I watched yeah. a video of that. That's it, it, I remember, didn't they? Wasn't that like the big tech demo of PlayStation 4 was like the million particle stuff or the million? Yeah. yeah. That that had to be the the one because particles were flying everywhere and eyeballs were melting. But yeah, I forgot they're giving that away for free on launch on launch day. So, um, really excited about that. I'm also gonna pick up Killzone, um, and I'm I'm kind I think I'm most curious about that game because I don't I didn't really like previous Killzones. I heard Killzone three kind of fixed a lot of the like the actual um, the controls and the gameplay of that was a little bit off in Killzone 1 and 2. Um, but this one doesn't look like it has... It's like 30 years after that trilogy and kind of like a new-looking world. Mm. It has some promise. Um, but I think in the end it'll probably just be a you know an above-average launch game. I don't think it'll be bad. I don't think it'll be great. So I'm getting that feeling. That's how I feel about of, it. Um, and I'm going to get Knack. You know, Mark Cerny's been out there in front of the PlayStation <laughs> 4. He's got to be working on something awesome, right? But... Everything, I've, everything I've seen neck. from that, I don't, I don't know, but um, it should be, it should be fine. Um, Peggle two. Peggle two is not making the <laughs> making the the release list there. Um, I wonder why. 
Yeah, because Target and Amazon both had their uh, buy two, get one free, and uh, I missed it on Amazon. They sold out of the games that I wanted. So a Killzone Knack, I mean, I might get FIFA or Assassin's Creed 4. And then um, the other game I'm keeping an eye on is Need for Speed Rivals. Which that I liked. Could be good. I liked all the need, recent Need for Speed games. This isn't Criterion, but everything I've seen from the game looks pretty damn good. So, um, who's doing this one? Is it? Uh, yeah. for, it's like Team Ghost or something like that. I forget the name what? of the studio. It's like Ghost Studios <laughs> where these, or where do these teams come from? I don't know. It's the other team, and it used. I don't know who it used to be, but I think they're taking over the franchise going forward. So, um, huh. and then Contrast is the other indie release that'll also be out in PSN. Um, uh, but moving on to the rest of the new releases this week, XCOM Enemy Within is the big one we have our eyes on. We were going to stream that. Yeah. I thought we were going to stream that this week, then I found out that our our XCOMer, who lives in Germany, who would handle the live streaming uh, of this game, that game doesn't come out till Friday in Europe. So That uh, sucks. We'll, we'll see that next week. But I still need to play through... Um, enemy unknown before Me I'm gonna too. try this. So, but I'm super stoked for for enemy within. I will pick that up at some point. You are gonna be playing some B, uh, some DLC this week. Um, I am burial at I'm sea. Armed. Part part one of the Bioshock Infinite DLC came out. Fifteen bucks, and all I keep hearing is people say it's short. Yeah, they're saying it's it's short. Apparently, if you just kind of zone out. And just play it. Apparently, you can beat it in a couple of hours or something like that. I did get the season pass on sale sometime back. So, I mean, fifteen dollars seems steep if you were to buy that by itself. But I think I maybe spent fifteen dollars for that entire season pack. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that uh, was the better deal. That seemed, yeah, that seemed weird. But I can't wait to get to those once I finally get through the uh, um, the game, uh, the main game, and. Um, yeah, there are some free-to-play stuff and some other releases coming out for PlayStation 4. I'd, I'll be playing Warframe. I want to check that out on consoles. And I know War Thunder is also going to be playable. Awesome Knots uh, is coming to PS4, but it doesn't look like it made it. It's not going to make the North American release. It'll be out later in the month. Ah, um, uh, dickfish. <laughs> I'm, dude, I, we talk, I think we talked about this before the podcast, but Ratchet & Clank Into the Nexus is out. Yes. Saying thirty bucks, so it's discounted, but it sounds like it's just you know another great Ratchet and Clank game. I want to marathon through those, man, because I have never given that franchise the love that it deserves. And I've I've played through I think almost every Ratchet and Clank game, uh, maybe not so much the arena based one that came out. I can't remember the name of it, but I did play. This is like the last one to their future trilogy, which started with uh, Tools of Destruction. Yep. I really enjoyed the one before this, which was like a, a crack in time or something. That one's really good, I thought. So where, this where one was is the Quest for Booty thing. I don't know where that one falls into the whole timeline of. I know it Ratchet comes free and with Into the Nexus. So. But yeah, it comes free with it. Uh, that one actually, I don't know if it, maybe it's not a trilogy. Maybe Quest for Booty takes place after Tools of Destruction, mm-hmm. if I'm remembering right. But I haven't played that one either. So if it comes free with it, that gives me two games for the price of thirty. So, <laughs> um, and uh, but I'm hearing Nexus is pretty good, even if it's on the short side. But hey, that you know thirty dollar price point, I do like Ratchet and Clank. Yep. Um, some other games that I don't really know too much now about. I know Blood Knights is out. For PC this week, there's a game called Deadfall Adventures that looks like an Indiana Jones type of game. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Um, going through the PC stuff here. Some Company of Heroes DLC it looks like um, Injustice Gods yeah. Among Us Ultimate Edition. So that'll be out for PC and PlayStation Four. Um, and you liked that? I, I like thought. that game. That's so- great story mode. Great story mode, and you know. Made me like some DC superheroes that I didn't like before. So, um, Sim Cities, Cities of Tomorrow um, expansion. Next. <laughs> um, X Rebirth. I never got into the X series. Let me double check my other list here. Me neither. Um, but to World of Warplanes. Get some War Thunder competition there. World of Warplanes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's from the World of Tank, guys. So, it's the. Okay. Um,. I think they've got warships coming out too. And don't forget that Flower and Sound Shapes are also out for 
PS4. The other PSN release for PS4, um, Super Motherload. I don't really know anything about that game. Do, do, do. I don't. I don't know anything either. Do, do, do. Skylander Swap Force. That's that's big for lots of people. And that looks like it's um, uh, and excuse me, Nintendo DS and 3DS. Barbie Dream House Party. So Aaron will be reporting in on that in two weeks. When we the next time, I will get my review up. It'll be a real <laughs> doozy. Keep your eyes open for it. Cool. Uh, that's gonna do it for new releases. We get out of here uh, with game pitches. Now uh, your description makes it makes it look like you might have thought through this a little bit. So uh, I have no idea where this idea came right. from, but it was. It came so quickly after I looked at what I sh- should even write for a game pitch. <laughs> but for some reason, uh, and I think it's just because I really like the Rampage games, and no one's made a Rampage game in a long time, that some something made me think about giant monsters, and I was like, oh, well, Peter Molyneux, you know, he did black and white, and it was all about having the monsters take care of villagers, and they were worshipped as gods. But what if they were also in the middle of a big, you know, fight with each other, around the world, which that's where the Rampage World Tour comes in. But then I'm like, well, wait a minute. These people seem to worship these giant animals, and they mm-hmm. don't get to choose mm-hmm. who they're actually worshiping. What if they had to run in an election <laughs> to actually become the super animal deities that they they are? So You just turned an awesome idea into like a really boring simulator. Oh, well, it's, it's not like that. <laughs> but, but basically, they go around, so all the, you pick your animal... So you got, you can pick a giant turtle, let's say, and then you have to campaign around America, you know, to gain votes. But you gain votes by destroying something. So it's all about about the destruction of Rampage. You fight other monsters, you know, to knock them out of the the running. So you're destroying stuff. You're gaining points. You're getting votes. You're getting people backing behind you. But every now and then, maybe a question will can't pop you, up, and you, it will be like, uh, like how do you feel about this? You know this. Which city should we take down next? Yeah, like, so we're going to take this fight to New York. But what do you think about this issue? (laughs) And so to to answer that question, you're, like, just beating up your opponents and destroying things and getting your point across. And then at the end of the day, you become president of the United States. You're a giant turtle. But then you have bigger aspirations, and then you essentially become God. Oh, I see the leap there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. (laughs) I'm I'm more concerned about the, the, the micro level of this game because... And so the P- you think the humans are actually going to elect you? The hum- yeah, the, you're, the humans want to elect you. <laughs> they want to elect one of these monsters as president. I can buy it. But you're also my- destroying the- things. Right, you're destroying things. So you could just – couldn't you eat the demographics that aren't going to vote for you? Well, I, you, you kind of play by the rules. Okay. To start with, but then you become God, and then you eat everybody. That's the uh, the ultimate reward, is you just get to play <laughs> Rampage World Tour, you just happen to be President Monster. Yeah. Okay. It's like, so yeah, it's it's like Saints Row 4, just with Rampage, you know, mix, a mixture of black <laughs> and white. <laughs> you know, I, I think we're going to hit a point where every game, like... If you expand it and expand it, it's just going to become Saints Row 4. That's what's so brilliant about that game, too. Is <laughs> that's, just... why, that's why yeah, Saints Row 4 is the way it is, because Volition's like, we're making these games bigger and bigger, and where do we go from here? And so essentially, well, I, everything just... Well, I think like, the end game of all series. I think you solve Saints Row 5 is that you just become God. You just become God. I mean, that's... I kept thinking, like, oh, we're, you know, at the end of Saints Row 3, I was like, okay, where the hell do they go from here? And then they did the president thing. And so everybody's asking, what are they going to do with Saints Row from here on out? But I think you just solved it because the goal of Black and White Rampage World Tour, President Election Edition, you know, <laughs> you become the president and then you become God. So, um, <laughs> and Well, the only problem is if Saints Row 5 follow this formula I'm trying to lay out, mm-hmm. like they've, they've really done away with the need to drive cars. In Saints yeah. Row Five, because if you're God, why are you driving cars? Just he, he's just a car guy, man. He just he just likes collecting. You, just, you them. collect all the cars. All the cars are sports cars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I I don't know what happened there, but I I like the I, I like where that ended up. Like I don't know it if we made the tweaking, next great but... rampage game, yeah. the next great election simulator, or if we made we made Saints Row Five. So. Um, I hope we've made all of them. Yeah. So I've been 
we've been dungeon crawling a lot, and um, I actually like like I said, I was, and I didn't really talk about this on the show, but really, I really got into really got into some BlizzCon coverage uh, this past weekend, and um, I got that itch, I got that that old. Uh, World of Warcraft itch and just couldn't That's find dangerous. it. Could not find anything to like satisfy it. Like I, as I didn't want to re up my subscription. And so when I get in that mood, I just want to quest. I just want to quest, which usually evolves into dungeon crawling, which is how I ended up, you know, experimenting with uh, desktop dungeons. And it, it, that ended up being, it ended up working. But like, have we hit the point? Like, I, like, I guess Marvel, uh, is it Marvel superheroes? Is it Marvel heroes? Whatever that free to play, um, Action RPGs. Yeah, like Marvel heroes. Yeah. Um, we need more dungeon crawlers that aren't fantasy. They aren't dungeon crawling. Like, uh, how would you take, like, dungeon crawling gameplay into something, like, in modern society? Like, where else would that work? Like, would... Um, could, like, if it's just, like, building up the loot system and it's just... Um, you know, it, you, you can integrate into The Sims and, like, you're it's just... You're going to the grocery store, but you're getting loot. Like other other things where I can get quests <laughs> and loot, but not have to go do orcs versus humans or go like fantasy. So I want to try to find another scenario where that would work. So there's like a supermarket just full of loot, and there's all these heroes just shopping for like all the the legendaries. <laughs> Wait, I, I don't, that was not my intention, but I do like I do like the the fact that these heroes have other lives yet. They are so geared for quests and for loot that everything has to work that way. So even <laughs> all of your all of your like minuscule chores around the house are also quests that give you loot. I like the shopping analogy. Just to imagine, like Black Friday is coming up soon, and people will like form lines out the you know right at the door, all waiting to rush in to get that discount stuff. And imagine, like, all these legendary battle axes and stuff just put out on displays. And all these superheroes of varying levels are just waiting to, like, go inside. And then it just that's when the game starts. They all start fighting each other with their current loadouts trying to get all the loot. I mean, think of, like, the future that the X-Men are afraid of where everybody's a mutant. And then there are Black Friday sales. <laughs> and then there are Black Friday sales. Like and holiday holiday deals like yeah all these um all these mutants using their superpowers to break down the doors of of some futuristic best buy just to get the the next great furby that's my go-to that's my go-to black item is a is furby for some reason furby yeah well uh, yeah like jordan in the chat mentioned the thing i always think about is like the tickle me yeah, elmos that would be it you only get the the new Tickle Me Elmo if you're level 35 and up. PVP. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a level requirement before you can actually tickle the Elmo. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't work. What it other, burns your hands if you try to pick it up at 34. Chat. What other what what other mundane quests could use leveling up, looting, and uh, PVP? <laughs> need this new PS4, but I need to be level 50 <laughs> badass to get through this line. Thanks, Panther. For... I think rush hour traffic needs a leveling oh, up shit. system in PvP. Yeah. Like you could you could solve gridlock by just having drivers of cars just eliminate each other. Elite, to get the traffic elite cars. Like you don't have that. You don't have the uh, yeah, carpooling elite, lane. You have the, mount. the elite lane. It's just monster trucks at that point, isn't it? Like you monster... just drive over each other. Yeah. I mean, I, well, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know how it would work. I guess. You level up your car enough, it becomes not, a monster I, I truck. I guess I can't see the cars driving if they're all... Yeah, you just drive over everyone else. You'd be that one guy. Like, what would that person have to do to have the monster truck? I'm imagining... Like, they don't even have Lots a job. Terrible they, stuff. they sit at home. They they, 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 wear, they wear the diaper. They went on they all the... They essentially level up their character and their car. <laughs> just to always win traffic. What? How, how many raids do you have to go on to get the monster truck? And do you have to share that mo that monster? What? What? <laughs> you share the Wait. monster truck. Wait, I'm trying to think of the scenario where the the rare loot drop is a monster truck. So I mean, obviously, you've had to go to the monster truck event, and somehow you have t 
taken out the the driver of Gravedigger and taken Gravedigger home with you. <laughs> this just seems like a, a whole society without rules, essentially, at a certain point. <laughs> like you just you murder the former driver of the truck, and then now the truck is yours. But then you become the uh, the the elite monster truck. And then you become During the traffic truck. Jam, so. You are the truck. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I think that's it. I think that's it for Night Force tonight. But boop, boop. Chat, thanks for hanging out with us this evening. Uh, we will be back next week. Um, I believe we have, we've got two podcasts next week. Uh, top video game podcast of the week will return. Um, be on the lookout for our PlayStation 4 live streaming on Friday. Uh, gaming in between now and then as well. And more articles on HorribleNight.com. Uh, Aaron, thanks for hanging out, man. No problem, Justin. Glad to do it. And we will catch you all next time. We'll see you later. Boop, boop.